Hi everyone, welcome back to satdecoded.com. Today we're going to continue our discussion of functions. In the previous introduction video, I talked about input-output machines. That's what I define a function as. We talked about a function being something that has a role or a purpose. So if they gave you a master formula of f of x equals x squared, plus five, what is the purpose or what is the role of this machine? Well, the role is to be able to evaluate some sort of uh, output when they give you an input. So for example, when they gave you an input of four, you would be able to evaluate it by replacing the x with your four because both the x and the four are inputs. So this becomes 16 plus five, which is 21. 21 is the output. So in today's lesson, I really want to get uh, deep with identifying the differences between inputs and outputs. This is going to be critical if you're going to master functions. And it's crucial for you to master functions because functions are actually one of the biggest concepts on the SAT. In fact, it accounts for approximately 9 or 10% of your entire math score. Maybe that doesn't seem too much to you, but for a single concept to account for so much, 10%, that's, that's huge. So get good with this. And it all starts with identifying inputs and outputs. So the first thing you need to know is that every function has two inputs and every function has four outputs. So what are they? Well, the x or the x value is the input. We've been talking about that. This, this thing inside the parentheses is x. So that is our first input. And that equals whatever happens to replace it. So th in this case, it's 4. It could be anything. It could be 4, it could be 5, it could be an expression like x plus 2 or a variable like a. Whatever happens to be in the new parentheses, that is our actual input value. So just remember inputs are x and the actual input. Outputs, there's there's a little bit more, there's four of them. So if inputs are x's, then outputs are y's, the y value. And we can think of y equaling the function itself, just you know f of x, or we can think of that as just the function. Functions are always attached to some sort of formula. And that formula I call the machine because this is the machine that will spit out your output. You stick something into this machine or you stick something into this formula and out comes an output. So it's the machine or the formula. And of course, when you calculate this, this formula or use the machine, you come out with some sort of value. And that value in this case would be 21. So 21, I call that the actual output value. Those are the four outputs. So why, why do we care about this? Well, let's say they give you, um, they give you this expression, f of x equals 14. And they're asking you, so what is x? Using the same master formula right here. A lot of people at this point, what they do is they, they think that they see a 14 and they see x, so they automatically just say, well, if f of x, I'm just going to do 14 squared plus 5. But if you stop and think about this, what are they really doing here? They're saying that the x right here is now 14. But is that what the question told us? No, the question told us f of x equals 14. They did not say x equals 14. I mean, if, you, if you're just saying x is 14, then we can just say x is 14 right here and we've solved the question. Do you think it's really going to be that simple? Probably not, right? So this right here is just it's completely wrong. If we use, if we think about what they're telling us, f of x equals 14, this f of x portion is kind of like this portion right here. It's the function. And remember, functions are outputs. So 
So they're telling us that the output is equal to 14. So if the output is, it, is equal to 14, then why would we stick the output where the input was supposed to go? That's why this 14 squared plus 5 is wrong, because when they did 14 squared, they're assuming that the 14 is the input. However, in reality, 14 is our output. Output equals output. So functions is really just a, it's just a game of replacing things f of x equals 14, well, what else can we say it equals? Because both f of x and 14 are outputs. That's two of the four outputs we have already. We have the function one, and we have our actual output value ready. So we need two more. So what is the machine? Well, in this case, the machine is x squared plus 5. That's another way of expressing our output. So why not just say, 14 equals x squared plus 5. And of course, it's going to equal y. y is just the automatic default output value. So we have output equals output equals output. This hopefully makes sense to you. It's just saying the same thing equals the same thing equals the same thing, which still equals the same thing. It's kind of like saying 1 plus 3 is equal to 2 plus uh, 2 plus 2, which is equal to 0, plus 4, which is equal to negative 2, plus 6. These are four different expressions, but they all equal the same thing. They all equal the value of negative 4. Just like functions, four ways of expressing the same output. So now that we have all four of them listed out right here, we can think about which portions are pretty useless to us. Well, f of x by itself right here doesn't really help us calculate anything, so let's get rid of it. Neither, neither uh, does this y. But what we're left with, 14 equals x squared plus 5, that's golden. We can use that as an algebraic expression to solve. So how do we solve it? Well, we can subtract 5 from both sides, so 14 minus 5 equals x squared. 14 minus 5 is 9, so 9 equals x squared. So if we take the square root of x squared, we get x. So x is equal to plus or minus 3. Remember, it can be either plus or minus 3 because negative 3 times negative 3 is also equal to a positive 9. If you really think about what this plus or minus 3 is, it's an input because it equals x and x is also an input. And of course, input has to equal an input because they're both the same thing. To flip it around, maybe it'll help you understand a little better. Let's, let's put that 3 and negative 3 back into our formula. So what if we said the input were positive 3? So you write it this way, f of 3. So how do we evaluate f of 3? Well, the input is 3, so we just put it where our x used to be. So it becomes 3 squared plus 5. And what is 3 squared plus 5? Well, that equals 9 plus 5, which equals 14. And lo and behold, this 14 is exactly what the question told us. Do you remember that the 14 was an output? Well, here it is. f of 3 is 14. The same thing will happen if we do f of negative 3. Now we're saying that the input is just negative 3. So remember, the whole quantity of negative 3 is the input, so that whole thing needs to be squared. Well, negative 3 squared is still positive 9, plus 5 is still 14, which is our output. So as you can see, when they gave us our question, f of x equals 14, if we can recognize that 14 was an output, and remember not to stick this output where the input was supposed to go, then we can solve this question. Let's try a slightly uh, more complicated one. Let's say we have f of x plus 2. What does that equal? And let's say, let's, let's continue using the same master formula. They give us f of x equals x squared plus 5. But this is the question right here. Well, what is our input here? Our input is just the x plus 2 part. 
remember f of x plus 2 is definitely not equal to x plus 2. Because this whole entire function f of x plus 2, that is an output. And just the x plus 2 part, which is the part inside the parentheses, that is our input. An output does not equal an input. So now that we've identified our input as x plus 2, all we have to do is take that expression and input it into our machine. So this should equal, this is going to lead us to x plus 2 squared plus 5, and you know that is f of x plus 2. So what this is saying is this whole thing now is our machine. And remember our machine is also known as an output. This whole thing right here is our function. And a function is otherwise known as an output. And output equals output. Machine equals function. This whole thing equals this whole thing. So that's how you evaluate this. When you want to uh, simplify this expression, though, you got to be very careful. A lot of people make the mistake here and say x plus 2 squared equals x squared plus 2 squared, and then they add the plus 5. Well, the problem with this is what they've done is they've taken, they've taken the power of 2 and tried to distribute it to each part. But that's not really how exponents work. If you think about the definition of an exponent, for example, c squared, what does that mean? It means c times c. There's two c's because power of 2. Well, same thing here. x plus 2 is a quantity, and there needs to be two of them. So what that really means is x plus 2 times another x plus 2. And if you FOIL that out, that is not going to equal this right here. If you FOIL this out, first, that gives us x squared, outer, gives us 2x, inner, another 2x, and finally, last, 2 times 2 is 4. Combine like terms, this part in the middle, this becomes x squared plus 4x plus 4. So you can see right here, we're completely missing a middle term. We're missing the 4x, because 2 squared is this is last term 4, but we're missing the 4x in the middle. So don't make this mistake. 4, or sorry, x plus 2 squared does not equal x squared plus 2 squared. x plus 2 squared does equal x plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, so that is the the parentheses portion squared, but we have to remember to add 5 at the end. So let me just rewrite this so it's a little clearer. f of x plus 2 is equal to x plus 2 in parentheses squared plus 5. And we've evaluated this part earlier. We got x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then let's just copy down this plus 5 at the end. So of course the 4 plus 5 can be added together, and that becomes 9. So it becomes x squared plus 4x plus 9. And that entire expression is our output. If you remember our input, our input is just this part, x plus 2. I hope that makes sense. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.